Here are some parts from eBay for the Toyota Camry Hybrid. So, first, the battery sensing module. This thing right here looks nice and clean. Make sure all the pins are intact. Super nice. And this is the whole bus bar and sensing wire assembly from a Toyota Prius. You want to make sure this connector, again nice and clean, plugs in here. Perfect. So we have a good connector, good module. The only um, thing that's different from the Camry is this thing has uh, 15 cells instead of 17. So if you count them, you start here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So basically 15 sense wires, <clears throat> including the grounds. The Camry has 18. So let's see how many pins are not populated. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 empty pins. The Camry has two empty pins. So we will have to salvage a couple of good pins from the Camry and <clears throat> we'll see what the easiest way to do it is. I, mean, I don't want to solder 18 wires together but if we have to, we have to. And I, I want to make sure the wiring colors stay OEM. So we have those two parts and then for the HV battery I got five refurbished cells so we're going to take the four bad ones off the car and I want to do some checks on the bench with the power supply. Basically, you know, hook up a 5 amp test light, leave it for 15 minutes, and then charge it back up to 8.2 volts and just compare the bad cells to the good cells, make sure these are um, can hold the charge, put everything together, clear the codes, and hopefully this thing will be driving today. All right, so I want to take off this entire bus bar assembly and take it to the bench and then make a good one. You know, solder all the wires on the bench because soldering live wires isn't exactly, um, you know, it's easier to do it on the bench anyways. So let's get this off. Now you might say, is this safe? So you always want to picture where the voltages are. All right, so each pair of cells is going to be 16 volts and our service plug grip is unplugged so basically the battery right now is cut in half so if you touch this end and that end no current can flow you're safe um, so this half the battery now if we have like 240 volts total DC this is going to be 120 so if you touch here and here yeah that's that's not good but just don't do that uh, so we're just going to take these off one at a time. I'm going to keep the... nuts in their corresponding place. And once we get the bus bar off, um, we have to undo these four. All right, I got all the nuts undone. Let's just gently wiggle this whole assembly off. And that's being very friendly. And now that wire, I guess, is clipped in to here. So let me just unclip that big wire from this assembly. We'll take it to the bench. All right, now from the trunk side, we got this section of bus bar removed. We're just interested in these four cells. Um, get these bolts out right here. That's two. Okay. Get them from the other side here. So now, okay, 
those are I'm guessing we just get them out of the way. Should be fine. Now there's two more down there. We'll loosen them up. Sweet. Got the cells out, so let me move these four nuts. I just want these four cells. One. Let's move one at a time. holding it back there. All right, so I got the whole battery assembly propped up on a board. Now I'm just undoing these bottom screws from the cells. They're just little itty bitty guys. So those two there and then two on the other side and then we should be able to get these four cells out. So before taking the cells out, let's mark them. I'm just going to mark them 1, and X will be bad, 2, 3, 4, okay, and we'll know which side is which, now it's just, should be easy as that, oh, the way, there's wires connected to the bottom of that one, oh, that must be like a temperature sensor. Gently pop that off. Yep, okay. There's one, two, three. Oh, there's another temperature sensor in that one. Okay, four. So those temperature sensors, there's just little clips like this. Um, all right, I think we're in good shape. Back to the bench. All righty, <laughs> let's get to it. So we have our four bad cells. I want to load test them just to see what the capacity is of these completely discharged cells. So I charged them up to 8.2 volts so we'll turn down the voltage and I want to plug in my 5 amp test light, start the stopwatch and we'll see how long it takes for the voltage to drop to, oh I don't know, 6 volts, do a controlled experiment. It's already dropping fairly quickly, and the lights are just hanging out here. They won't burn anything. Um, yeah, let's see, and then we'll compare it to a good cell. So meanwhile, let's get to these contraptions. Um, as you can see, the Prius harness is different than the Camry harness. Because the Camry has three extra cells there. Um, so I want to retain the wiring colors OEM, however, these connectors, they're very finicky. You have to pop off, you know, pop up this white piece, and then to get each pin out, you have to put it in a very fine probe along the pin to push down the little retainer. So I've popped out a couple here. Here's what they look like. And again, we need three good ones, so I'm going to find the three best ones out of this connector. And there aren't very many because these are all crusty and burned. These are melted, so maybe some in the middle will be okay. Um, and basically, 
we'll have to solder most of the wires to the original harness. Um, basically unwrap this. So the wiring colors at the connector will be different, unfortunately, but we'll make a note that you have to follow the wires to past the connection. You know, the pins will be obviously correct. But so if someone doesn't get confused if they're diagnosing this Camry for another problem down the road. So let me unwrap this and we'll make a good harness out of out of two. Oh well, so about three minutes it's fully discharged 3.3 volts. So we'll unplug our test light. So we'll write that down about three minutes for cell one. Now we'll go to cell two. And you want to make sure your polarity is correct. Nice thing about this, it won't go over five amps. And dial up the voltage to So right now, obviously it's charging over 5 amps, but we'll um, let that one charge, do the same experiment. It's about 3 minutes for these cells, and we can compare it to a known good, see if that takes a lot longer, it has more capacity. Alright, cell number 2, starting at 8.2 volts, start the uh, timer and plug in our test light pair. See if the voltage depletes to under six volts in three minutes. Oh man, I missed it again. Under three minutes. Alrighty. See, test lights are super dim. Let's try and know good. See what if there's a huge difference. All right, here we go. So, first new cell, 8.2 volts. Plug in our test light. Start the timer. Let's see how long this one takes to discharge. All right, so it's been 21 minutes. We're only down to 7.3 volts. The test lights are still bright. So these cells, I'm happy with. So it's a good thing we're replacing all these. These are completely shot. Um, that's all I, I needed to prove. Um, well, let's finish up the wiring harness. All right, so this is going pretty well. Um, the old connector has nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine burnt off wires, and then one, two, three, four, five, six melted pins. <clears throat> so basically, we I salvaged three pins, three original wires that were still good, and I put them in the proper place, and all the other ones. We're just going to use these from the new harness. So we're going to use all the pieces of the new harness and then three remaining ones from the old harness and that makes 18. So that works out perfectly. No soldering required. Uh, you know, basically just we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven left. And I marked the ones that were okay. So that one's okay. That one's okay. And that one's okay. Um, so the lengths might not match up exactly, but it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, let me just finish this up. All right, so basically just do one at a time, all in a row. So this brown is the next one, and make sure, see these are flipped around, they're kind of mirror images. So you want to bend this to the proper orientation, and the pin will go into the next slot on the connector. They clip in so nice. Like so. And just keep going. Next is purple. Bend this around. 
like that. Pops right in. Next is the yellow. Straight in. So we'll make a note that go by the pinouts, not the wiring colors, because obviously the wiring colors will be different now. But I don't think that's going to bother anyone in the future. This is basically battery remanufacturing, isn't it? <laughs> We're saving the environment, people. I feel really green right now. <laughs> yeah, it, is, it is more satisfying than just replacing a $7,000 battery. That's for sure. Alright, it's looking really, really nice. So, everything's perfect. Obviously, we got a little extra length on some of the new wires. So, the ones before this first okay one are this bundle and then up to here is the second bundle and these are all OEM factory length the only uh, thing we do have to solder one wire because this one doesn't reach the very end because you know this harness was obviously shorter than the Camry harness so we're gonna leave this black and blue wire here I'm just gonna cut it off and soldered to the white wire which has a nice new pin going into the connector that's the last um, last wire in the in the array so yeah let me just do that and things should be ready to put back together I'm also topping off all the cells to 8.2 volts so this car should be good to go alright so I'm just gonna snip off the white wire right here strip it back I guess it's a 20, 20 gauge there we go, nice make sure the length is good. We're going to do the same with black and blue wire. Clean those off and don't forget your shrink wrap. <laughs> there. Perfect. Perfection. I like it. So we'll stuff this in here.
sure that wires are the right length. And I'm going to close this up. Okay. So that's it. That's the finished harness. Alrighty, let's put this press bar back on. I got all the nuts started. Who said working on hybrids isn't fun? finish that up we'll screw the battery back down and then we'll finally install the new battery sense module plug everything in see if it fires up all right here's the moment of truth so I got everything connected I uh, didn't bolt down the safety covers yet they'll uh, I'll finish that up once I know that the car is happy. So let's connect the negative battery cable here. Okay. Turn the key on. Log into this thing, clear the codes, and see if it see if it works. Okay, hybrid synergy drive, trunk open. It's not saying hybrid battery problem, that's a good sign. So let's log in here, do a full code scan, see what it says. All right, I'm liking this, ECM and hybrid control is green. Uh, airbags are the side curtain airbags in the back are unplugged. This thing, this, this thing you should fire up and run like nobody's business. Hopefully, all the cells, the other cells in the battery are fine. All right, let's enter the hybrid controller. Look at these voltages of all the cells. See if our new module is doing its thing. Data stream. So all these right here. Select page through 17. Minimum, maximum, okay. 14.8 to 16.2. 16, 16, 14, 14, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, okay. So three and four are a little low, just slightly, a couple tenths of a volt. It's ready. Okay, it doesn't like the trunk is open, but it's ready if we floor it. It's running. Yeah, I did check all the fluids. Oil's good, coolant's good. Where's our little display for the uh, battery? Oh, there we go, charge. Is it charging? Yep, three and four came up. Oh, these are 16s. These are brand new. Sweet. Let's let it run for a little bit. Let it finish charging. I do apologize about the glare. The sun is ridiculous today, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> Central PA, you got to take what you can get. 
17 so minus 12 amps so it's charging at 12 amps right now and all the cells should equalize eventually and one and two are 17.2 volts there. This thing charges them pretty good. <laughs> Minus 11 amps. Okay, I'll uh, turn the camera back on when it's done charging. All right, we're looking good about 10 minutes in. It's basically done charging. Maximum voltage 17.4, minimum 16.8, about half a volt difference. So number three, number four, just slightly lower, and we're done charging. It's not charging anymore. VO3, VO4, okay. Hey, if it's happy, I'm happy. Just uh, read fault code one more time. Oh man, replace hybrid battery pack pending. Dang it. I have to order more cells. It's not happy with three and four. Or so we replaced four cells or two assemblies, I guess. Oh one and oh two. I guess three and four were close enough. Those pins, they didn't get shorted out. Um, we'll see. See if it drives. I'll have to record that, but we know how to replace cells, so that's not a big deal. All right, well, let's take the Camry for a spin. See if it'll start fussing about that um, battery. It moves, which is amazing. It really hasn't moved in a while. There goes the engine. Take it for a spin, look at some data, see if the check engine light comes on, whatever. All right, so the only concern right now is that pending replace battery pack code, and it's because cells three and four are just slightly, and I mean slightly, lower than the other ones. 17.1 versus 16.9. I mean, 0.2 volts, they might stabilize, so what I'm gonna do is I'll just take it for a test drive I and mean, we can just monitor the voltages and see if eventually it'll actually set a code or not I mean 0.2 volts not not that big of a difference and you know these cells are just make sure all the other ones are 17.4 yeah all the other ones are spot on I don't know, it's 17, so 0 0.3 volts maybe, right there. So I don't think, we can look up the code, see what the threshold is. So I'm hoping it'll recover and be happy. The overall drives great. Pretty peppy. Step on the brake, look at that charging current. About 15 amps. Step on the gas. It uses about 30, 40 amps. Okay.
I think you should be okay. I mean, point, like point three volts, <clears throat> it's not that concerning. So I'm looking up this trouble code, P0880. Um, so it says, the detection condition, difference in voltage between battery blocks is larger than the standard. They don't give you a standard, but a, is it half a volt? Is it one volt? I, I don't know. So I'm going to clear this code. We're going to take it on another test drive and see, you know, see what happens. TMC's intellectual property, intellectual property. Da -na 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 -na. So that kind of hinders diagnostics if they tell you it's intellectual property, huh? So clear DTCs, perform the clear DTC procedure, turn the power switch off, turn power switch on ready, turn text stream on, perform perform a universal trip with the lever in N, leave the vehicle until state of charge drops to 30%. Okay. Enter the following menus. Check permanent DTCs are cleared. DCs output, the system is malfunctioning. And basically that's all, all the information we have. So we can try, try this. Take it on another test drive and monitor the state of charge. So, we're not quite out of the woods yet. And I don't know if this would disable the car or just give you a warning, but the car is drivable now. Um, and that's That was the main customer complaint. Well, she's all back together. Reassembled the interior of the vehicle. Reconnected the battery. We've got a green tree on the scanner. Let's take it for a final test drive. Monitor those uh, HV battery cell voltages. And hopefully you won't set that replace battery pack code. I want to get this car out of here. Well, check this out. Maximum voltage 16.4, minimum voltage 16.3. I think these uh, cells stabilized they all look very even, so let's take it for a spin. It's charging right now. And hopefully you'll be happy. It's driving perfect. Rainy spring weather. You can see the minimum and the maximum voltages are staying very close to each other. I like that. So let's do a little break. You can see minus 80, so it's charging at 80 amps. Yeah, this car's fixed. So, what's the moral of the story? Do I still think hybrids suck? Well, if you get water in the trunk, they really suck. <laughs> but they drive fine and yeah, you save on gas, especially in city driving where it's stop and go. That's where the battery really shines because it recharges when you stop and gives you that little extra push to accelerate. And that definitely saves gas and you're not just idling around. I'll give them that. Um, I'd say eBay to the rescue on this one. You're not going to get these components separately at the Toyota dealership. Um, Maybe the battery sensing module, but not the wiring harness, not individual battery cells. So this is, uh, yeah, I'd say stuff is available. Just go shopping on eBay. <laughs> um, grand total for Diag parts and labor on this car, um, about $1,600. That's a hell of a lot cheaper than replacing a $7,000 battery pack. And then you need the module on top of that. That would have fixed it, yes. Um, but is it necessary? No. No, this, this battery still has plenty of juice left in it. 
plenty of capacity, uh, except for those four cells that we had to replace. So, customer will be thrilled to get this car back. Uh, I think he's looking to sell it. So, if anyone's interested in a uh, 2012 Toyota Camry Hybrid with only 106,000 miles, put it down in the comments. Perfectly nice car. Um, so that's it. Appreciate everyone watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.